the naval bombardment's greatest effect was an unintentional one. The ferocity of it cut all of the land communication lines that connected the Japanese bunkers with their command headquarters. And what this achieved, of course, was severing command and control. The Japanese positions couldn't talk to one another. After 30 minutes, the shelling is halted to allow one final airstrike before the landing craft start their run onto the beach. Through a planning blunder, the planes are late. For those horrible 20 minutes, the Japanese fire on the unprotected landing transports. Finally, at 6.15, carrier bombers sweep over the island for a seven-minute bombardment. the planes, the naval bombardment is resumed. In two and a half hours, 3,000 tons of explosives have pounded the island. If the Marines are going to make it onto the beaches, the Japanese defenders must be wiped out. A second unintentional result of the naval bombardment occurred during the afternoon of the first day of the Marine assault. Naval destroyers operating close inshore by pure chance happened to kill Admiral Shibasaki and his key staff. This, in effect, rendered the Japanese garrison leaderless. The Japanese wait and watch the landing. Part of their plan is to make the Marines think they have been immobilized by the intense incoming artillery. For the unsuspecting Marines arriving in landing crafts, the plan works until they get close. Then all hell breaks loose. The first wave of Marines landing on Red Beach 1 is caught in a deadly crossfire. From undamaged shelters, the Japanese rake the beaches with machine gun fire, pinning the troops down behind the seawall. Another major blow to the Marines. The tide is too low, making it impossible for the amphibious tractors to get close enough to the beach. They are trained in that kind of water, but just when there's no rifles coming at you, you're all right. You don't mind it. What happened was 2nd Division had just come from the Aleutians, where they approached an island in the Aleutians, bombed it for three days, and not a shot came off of it. And when they finally sent the first wave in, there was nobody there. So they thought they were running into the same thing on Tarawa because they shelled, we shelled, and bombed it for three days. Not a shot came off of that island. So they thought it was another illusion. Those landing crafts, they were under heavy fire going in, very heavy fire. And uh, these landing crafts would pull up to try and get out to the beach and they would bomb them right out of the water. So naturally when the water hit them, they would drag them up on the beach. By 11 a.m., the commanding colonel is directing the battle from a position alongside a narrow pier which juts out into the lagoon. He orders his men to get as close to the pier as they can and not go any further. He then halts the troop landings and puts out a call for strafing. By the middle of the day, most of the amphibious tractors have been wrecked or sunk. None of the other landing craft can get over the reef. The bodies of dead and dying Marines are floating in the bloodied water. Ammunition is low, water is almost gone, and plasma is exhausted. 1,500 men are pinned down along the narrow, hellish strip of sand. At this time, the landing point on Tarawa earns its name, Beach Red. On day one of the invasion of Tarawa, Marines struggle to move off a narrow beach, but are pinned down by the entrenched Japanese.
from the Japanese point of view, for every Marine they shot, and they shot and killed hundreds of them, another Marine simply seemed to pop up and continue the fight. So on the first day, the Japanese did inflict heavy casualties. They did contain the beachhead, but because their communications were so completely disrupted, they were unable to take advantage of this and follow up with the counterattack. To help break the logjam, carrier-based planes bomb and strafe almost continuously. By the end of November 20th, 5,000 Marines have made it onto the beach. About 1,500 of them are wounded or dead. As the men dig in for shelter from the enemy, nobody is sure how this operation is going to play out.